absolutely. Yeah. Thank you for taking a moment out here uh, from the chaos at the conference. Just wanted to chat for a minute and see if I can get a sense from you of the significance of this event. You know, what's important about Teilhard for our time, and what do you think we're capturing here at the conference this weekend? Yeah, thanks, Craig. It's a great question. Um, first of all, I'm delighted to see, you know, the 150 people gathered here from all parts of the United States mm. and the 200 live stream participants from all around the world, mm. uh, from many English-speaking countries and Canada. So I think there's something going on here that, that's more than meets the physical eye. Mm. Uh, I think we are at a moment in our uh, planetary history where there's a felt need for a new vision, a new narrative. And I think Teilhard, uh, as we now have seen through the various talks we've heard, uh, brings a depth of the sacred, a depth of uh, meaning to the material world that we haven't had now for centuries. And there's a reawakening, I think, of something more in our midst, the more that we name as God, the more that we name as love. Uh, and I get a sense of energy among the people gathered here. There's a sense of optimism, a sense of hope, and it's a, it's a collective sense. We're mm -hmm. in this together. We heard a lot about that, right, so far this weekend. People saying, I want a reason to be hopeful. I want a reason to be optimistic. Where are we going? Is this headed anywhere other than downhill? And it sounds like the answer that we're finding again and again in these talks and the comments we're hearing from guests, yes, there is a reason to be hopeful. Yes. What is the reason to be hopeful? Well, you know, I think as Kathy Duffy pointed out in her talk this morning, in a 13.8 billion year mm. universe, mm. like life seeks more life. Mm. And despite the massive destructions and cataclysmic events that have gone on in cosmic history long before we arrived on the scene, <laughs> mm -hmm. right? Life has pieced together the fragments into new holes. Mm. And so there is an unbearable wholeness of being mm. at the heart of cosmic life. And we're part of that whole. And even though you know, we tend to focus our attention on only the negative, I think what we're seeing here this weekend is an awakening to the whole that we're a part of. Mm. And therefore, there is something pulling us on to more life. And therefore, that means that life is, the moreness of life is ahead of us. Mm. And that's hopeful. You know, I know from your work that the concept of wholeness is very important. I also know that it's an open whole. This is a moving, dynamic whole. Yes. This is an encapsulated, you once said, God's not a container. That's right. right? Uh, so tell us a bit about what that means for it to be an open whole. How can, how can this be holistic mm -hmm. and at the same time dynamic? Yes. So an open whole, and, and I think putting that in Teordian terms, I think what we're talking about is the increase in consciousness in embodied um, embodied materiality. Mm -hmm. So the um, openness of whole is that as our a level of awareness changes, new realities start to emerge so that um, every whole is always open to becoming more whole through an increase of relationality and an increase in consciousness. Mm -hmm. So a closed whole uh, is, can never be really whole. Actually, mm -hmm. a closed whole is a partial. Right? Yeah. So uh, an open, only an open whole can really be the fullness of wholeness itself, since the absolute whole would be God, infinite, eternal, mm -hmm. um, unending consciousness and love and beingness itself. So um, every whole, by its nature, must remain open towards more being in love, more consciousness, more life, in order to truly be whole mm -hmm. and not just a little fragment. Mm -hmm. And that eternity, that unchanging Godhead is dynamic. It's not the immutable, closed yeah. system God of Correct. yesteryear. This is a God that is moving forward, and that's why we're moving forward. Absolutely. I mean, I think Teilhard, you know, speaks a little bit of the Trinity, but I do think mm. that's what we're talking about here. We're mm. talking about a deeply relational God, a God who is canonic, agopic, mm -hmm. self-communicative, mm -hmm. where relationship itself defines God. So. God is always at the heart of our life. I mean, all that God is, is given to us, mm -hmm. you know, in, in materiality, which is what the incarnation's about, mm -hmm. right? So, so that every act of created freedom is an ongoing act of divine creativity itself. Mm -hmm. And there's this kind of dance going on between mm -hmm. God and the world, mm -hmm. that as we create and become something more, God becomes something more in us, mm -hmm. um, and God is always transcending us, and so mm -hmm. it's, it's like a tango of some sort, <laughs> you know, the divine human tango, I right. guess, or divine cosmic tango. Mm -hmm. So that, you know, what Meister Eckhart said is God 
is always new, right? The mm -hmm. ever newness in love. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think that's what the name God points to. I mean, where we got to this self-thinking, static monad, right. you know, sitting up in the sky guy, <laughs> God, <laughs> yeah. has been the most unhealthy and mm. unhelpful mm. image of God. Mm. The newness, the incarnational newness, it sounds like a Christmas message to me. You know, what do you want here? It's Christmas time for people to listening to this takeaway. What's the meaning for you of Christmas? You know, what do we have right now, thinking about the, the power of the Incarnation, the, that dynamism you're talking about, what's, how do you want people to think about what Christmas means? Yeah, well, I think, you know, the first thing is to be awakened to the gift of life mm -hmm. itself, to the gift of our own individual and personal lives, to the gift of family, mm -hmm. to the gift of creation. Um, that we are first receivers before mm -hmm. we are, in a sense, givers. Mm -hmm. And I think receptivity is, is an act of gratitude. And I think mm -hmm. Christmas really should be mm -hmm. an act of gratitude before it's a, an act of purchase power. Right. Um, right. And mm -hmm. the second thing is, I think uh, that this birthing of Christ is, is coming to an awareness of uh, the presence of God in us, that we are, you know, mm -hmm. that Christ. Mm -hmm. Um, and so it's a Christophanic uh, birth. Mm. It's a Christophanic mm. awakening mm. of the meaning of our own lives in mm. God. Mm. Um, and so I don't think, I think we can get lost in the whole consumerism sure. of Christmas and yeah. we become we become almost like brain dead yeah. to what, <laughs> you know, in other words, like catatonic or just, mm. you know, flat out baseline of, mm. of the brain where we're not aware that we are being invited to to awaken to the depth of love already within us to become something new. Mm. Like we are never fixed. And that's what I think we lose hope today when we think it's all over. You mm. know, when this is it, this is all over, mm -hmm. you know, it's all going downhill. When in fact Christmas is about, oh no, uh, God is being born, mm. right? God is being born in us, you mm. know, in a human person, in a little baby. Mm. So uh, simplicity, trust, surrender, and humility, I think, are virtues mm. that can help us, you know, maybe slow down mm -hmm. and, and become aware of what is already in our lives. To me, that means that every day is Christmas. Every day is Christmas. That's really a nice way to put uh, it, yeah. In a way, that seems to be maybe a background message of the conference, right? That the incarnational dynamism, this unfolding open whole, mm -hmm. this, uh, this divine love that's not just some sort of sentimentality, but this power, right? But not a brawny power, this selfless, canonic right. uh, giving forth. Uh, every day is Christmas, and that's what we're here to say. It is. That's really well put, Greg. I like that very much. Mm -hmm. You know, every day is Christmas. And, you know, it's, it's sad the way the culture has this as a circumscribed event. Okay, December 25th, you know, mm -hmm. that's it. December 26th, all the Christmas trees are put away. Mm -hmm. You know, major <laughs> scenes gone. Mm -hmm. and, th and we become culturally flattened out. You mm -hmm. know, we're, we're superficial and leveled out. Mm -hmm. And by doing that, we've actually cut ourselves off from the depth of divine love mm -hmm. that is at work, dynamically at work in our lives mm -hmm. and in our world. Mm -hmm. So maybe the conference is, like as you say, an awakening of a deeper reality mm -hmm. that we are part of and that deeper reality is empowering our lives and that we can help make this world a, a, a new world of hope, promise, and unity and compassion. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. So last words, take away from the conference in, in one word or, or one sentence. Love to the point of tears. Mm. to use the words of Albert Camus. Beautiful. Right? Love to the point of tears. Do not fear to fail in love. Do not fear um, when things go wrong. I mean, to give up uh, in despair because there is a power, again, that power of love is irresistible in our lives. It will get us up no matter how far down we go. And um, what we need to do is really trust, I think, the process of life that we're part of because God is at the heart of that life. Mm. Thank you so much, Ilya. I appreciate it. Thank you.